Hey, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the different sizes of keyboards. Let's get right into it. Uh, what are the different sizes of keyboards? Have you ever wondered how many different sizes that there are? Have you heard people talking about percentages when they're referring to their keyboards and maybe you wanna know what that means? So that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video, the different sizes of keyboards and how many keys each one has. So a standard keyboard has about 100 keys. You would call that a 100% keyboard. After that comes the TKL or the 10 key list with 87. The next size down is a 75% is a board that uses similar keys to the TKL, but they're arranged a lot tighter. 65% utilizes 66 to 68 keys is the last keyboard to have dedicated arrow keys. Following that is the 60% keyboard with 61 keys and is the most popular choice for custom boards. Next is the smallest keyboard that still functions normally, which is the 40% keyboard. After that is specialized boards known as number pads and macro pads. So the percentages that they're talking about just refers to how big the keyboard is and how many keys it has, like compared to the uh, standard keyboard. Uh, so first is the full size. It's the 100% keyboard. Uh, people don't usually talk about it that way. They, they usually just say 100, they usually just say full size or regular keyboard. A full size keyboard has all the keys you would need, such as a number pad, function keys, arrow keys, and the complete home row. This type of keyboard is ideal for most people. You could be a gamer, a typist, or even a programmer. It's really universal. It's a really good keyboard, but it is kind of big. So if you have a decent sized desk and plenty of space to work, there's no reason to not go with a full size keyboard, unless you just want a smaller keyboard, or you want to save a little bit of money. So it makes sense that the larger keyboards will cost more than the smaller ones, but that depends on the keyboard, especially if it's a custom made or you have to keep high maintenance on it. Uh, so sometimes the smaller keyboards can actually become more expensive because they're so like different and they're a little bit harder to find. Uh, so another thing to note is that some people prefer the TKL rather than the full size keyboard because the number pad actually makes more sense on the left. So some people get a separate number pad to go on the left side of their TKL keyboard. So next is the TKL. It's called the, it's the 10 keyless or TKL. They're essentially the same as a standard keyboard, except they don't have a number pad. They usually have 86 or 87 keys, are great with people with less deck space, but are used to a standard keyboard. And it's really easy to adjust to the new style. And if you really want a number pad, just go with the full one. Or if you want on your left, just get a separate one, you know. So you're not really missing much with the TKL. It's my personal favorite. That's the one that I have. Uh, so I highly recommend that. You might prefer this keyboard if you want the keypad on the left side, you find on the right side is awkward. Uh, most keyboards have a TKL variant you can purchase, so finding one you like is really easy. It's the first step towards converting to a compact keyboard user. It's smaller than a standard keyboard, but not by a whole lot. You still have the home row, function keys, and arrow keys. So yeah, again, my personal favorite, the one I use, it's a good keyboard. Next is the 75%. This is when the there are some changes with the key sizes and layout. This is needed in order to make the keyboard more compact. It's pretty much just a smush version of the TKL. For example, the home row is aligned in a vertical manner and they also have the arrow keys and home clusters side by side. Not only that, but some of the key sizes are actually adjusted, such as the right shift key is smaller than you may be used to. This could seem a bit weird at first. However, you may not notice it because this key is rarely used. I always use my left shift key, most people do as well. Uh, another thing to note is this type of keyboard is less common and harder to find. Your options are pretty limited when it comes to the 75% model. On top of that, if you're into building custom keyboards or buying custom parts for your keyboard, it's a lot harder, it's a little harder to do with 75%. This goes along the same lines of them being so rare, the parts are too. Just a few things to keep in mind before you look into this size keyboard. So it's a good keyboard, it may be a little bit harder to manage, but if you really want it, you know, it's, you can go out and get it. It's, uh, the next size down is the 65% keyboard. This is the smallest size you can go before things get complicated. A few things happen at this size, making it pretty interesting. At this point, the entire function row of keys is eliminated as well as the home cluster. The good news is, is that this keyboard still has dedicated arrow keys, which is a must for a lot of people. This style of keyboard is also quite uncommon, similar to the 75% board. However, a lot of people love these keyboards because they're the smallest you can go without losing some key functionality. Depending on how you use your keyboard, you may not be able to go this small. If you find yourself using the function keys, then this will not be for you. You'll just be constantly changing the key map settings, which will be a big hassle when you could just get a bigger keyboard. But if you don't use those keys often, you may love the size keyboard. So if you're a gamer and you just want to use WASD, sure, go for it. Uh, next, we get down to the 60% keyboards. This is where things get really compact. To achieve this level of compactness, these keyboards remove the same keys as the 65%, as well as the dedicated arrow keys. 60% keyboards also make some of the keys smaller than usual, which may be a bit awkward at first and take some time to get used to, but if you need to use certain keys like the arrow keys and the function keys, there are different modes that you will switch to to make the keys function differently depending on the mode. Going this small is too much for a lot of people. 
but a lot of people also love the style keyboard. It's one of the most popular for custom built mechanical keyboards. So if you don't mind a few drawbacks such as having to switch modes and having to get used to such a small board with a different layout, you can enjoy some pretty cool benefits. These benefits include plenty of customization options as well as some pretty good deals on parts. Uh, these keyboards in general are pretty low cost, so, though, so the parts are also low cost. So it's a good deal. The next is the 40% keyboard. It has 30 to 41 keys. It's the final step down you can take before your keyboard does not function normally. After this, you're just down to the number pad or a macro pad. We're talking about the 40% keyboard. This is the most minimalistic keyboard. There's no home row, there are no numbers, pretty much anything that's not a letter is gone. As far as I know, the 40% keyboard is not even manufactured or is very rare if it is. The only way to get your hands on this size keyboard is to build it yourself or buy it from someone who builds it. Uh, this is because so few people actually want this keyboard. If you're wondering how it works, the keyboard is programmed in layers. There's a specific key to, to press that you, to, that you press to swap layers in order to get the different keys you may need, such as numbers or special characters. This keyboard would be the hardest to get familiar with and is definitely not recommended for most people. Though I'm not too sure why you'd want one than just to be different. I guess if you really needed to save room on your desk, I don't see how you couldn't make a little bit more room to fit a 65% or 6% though if you really needed a really small keyboard. It's... It's hard to use, bro. I, I would not get a 40%, but some people do. Uh, next is number pads. They're exactly as they sound. They're simply the numbers on a pad. They include things like plus and minus, as well as other th things needed for data entry. They're typically about 17 keys, and some people actually can play games on them. The one reason to own a number pad is so when you're done with its use, you can store it. So if you instead of getting the standard size keyboard, you can just get your number pad and put it away if you really need to save uh, room on your desk. Also, you can put it on the left side of your keyboard, which is a lot more comfortable than uh, the right side. I don't know why. I guess my left hand is, when I'm typing, is so much better than my right hand. I guess that's probably true for a lot of people. Um, next is macro pads. Macro pads are similar in size to the number pad. However, their functionality is quite different. A number pad can be programmed to uh, act like a macro pad. However, doing so is really complicated, so you're better off just getting a macro. A good example of a macro pad would be a stream deck that a lot of popular streamers use nowadays. It makes live streaming a lot smoother. The point of a macro pad is to have a string of commands all tied into one button press. This makes multitasking super easy and things that require many commands a breeze. They're great if you do a lot of video editing or computer programming in general, or all, as I said earlier, if you're a streamer, it's, it's pretty, it actually helps a lot. These will significantly reduce the amount of time it takes to complete your work. So what size keyboard should you get? There are a number of things that you should consider when you're deciding which keyboard you want. If you want something for a desk setup, easy to understand, that is comfortable, that would make the most sense. But if you tend to carry your keyboard from place to place, then you might want to get a more compact design. The smallest most people should go is probably a 65% board. But if you're wanting something different from what you're typically used to seeing and using, then 60% and lower could be interesting. But it is a really big learning curve, so I'd be cautious in going in that direction. The main thing to consider here is how many keys you actually use regularly on your keyboard. You don't want a compact keyboard that removes these keys. The best range for people to have a compact keyboard would probably be between a TKL and a 65%, with my personal favorite being the TKL. That's the one I use. It's nice and small, but has all the features you could ever need. It's not the best at portability, but it's better than a full size. If you do need the number pad, you can buy one separately. So the TKL, it's about that big. It's not. It fits on my desk easily. It's like, it's nothing... That's my personal favorite. That's one I, I would recommend the most. So in conclusion, you now have a complete understanding of all the different sizes of keyboards, from a full-size 104-keyed keyboard all the way down to a keyboard with about 5 or 6 keys. The smaller keyboards with 5 or 10 keys are, of course, specialized for certain tasks like making simple commands all the way up to the more complicated demands. The full-size keyboard is great for the general user, which continues to the TKL, but not much smaller. From there, we have the oddballs that are 65, 75, and 40%, which are the less common ones. Then you have the 60%, which is what is most commonly used on the custom keyboards. Uh, so yeah, go check out some keyboards of different sizes and see which one works best for you. By the way, if you want to read the full article, the link to this will be down in the description box below. Also, the infographic that is, on this present, that is presented in this video will be available on the website, so go check it out. So yeah, more guides and reviews, check out KeyboardKings.com. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope that helped.